What's up everybody, EJ here with my design assistant Gus, my very lazy design assistant Gus. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you all the basics of 3D modeling in Cinema 4D as we build up a piggy bank from scratch. I'll introduce you to the most common modeling tools and workflows to get you up and running modeling in Cinema 4D. And be sure to download the free 3D piggy model. You'll find the link to that in the description below. You ready to get started? Let's go. All right, so let's create our piggy. We're gonna start out with a cube in a subdivision surface. Throw the cube in the subdivision surface to round that out. Now the key to modeling is to basically block out the basic form or shape of your object and then start adding some detail. So we got this basic cube, we're subdividing it and you can see if we go to display, garage chain with lines, all those subdivisions that are coming from the subdivision surface. Now, we can't exactly model a lot of detail with just the box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bake in the subdivision surface by hitting the C key. And so you'll see that all those edges that were added via the subdivision surface are now baked in. We Now we can go to our polygon mode and start modeling with this new level of subdivided geometry. So I'm gonna double click this, rename this object to Piggy. And then what we're gonna do, let's start out by modeling the leg. And what I'm gonna do is model one leg at first and then basically use symmetry to create all the other three legs. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna select these polygons by holding the shift key down. And then I'm gonna inner extrude or inset by hitting M and W to get inset, and we'll go and extrude this in like so. And what we can do at this point is extrude downwards, but legs are pretty circular, and this is a pretty boxy looking leg at this point. So to get these polygons taking the shape of a circle, I can right click and go to fit circle, very aptly named, and if I just click and drag, you can see that now those polygon edges are now fitting the shape of a circle, but you can see that's kind of flattening everything out. So what I'm gonna do is click on project to surface and that's gonna keep a nice rounded group of polygons there that follows the rest of the flow, a nice curvature of our object. And so at this point I can hit the E key and extrude downwards. So I'm gonna hit command or control and click and drag on the Y axis here. And you can see I'm bringing this down. Now, let's actually throw this into subdivision surface to see what's going on there. And you can see that we have this nice little nubby here. And if I hit Q, that's gonna toggle the subdivision surface on and off. So I just wanna show you what's going on behind the scenes after we subdivide this. But what I'm gonna do at this point is just hit T for scale and scale these polygons down. I'm gonna hold the shift key to constrain to increments of 5% and just flatten that out. Now you can see that this isn't very round, this selection here. So what I'm gonna do is again, right click and go to fit circle. You can see that's gonna fit the circle a little bit better there. And I'm gonna command click and drag again and bring this down. And if I hit the Q key, you can see that we have this nice flat edge now at this point. So we got this like nubby little leg going on. And if we wanted to thicken this, what I can do is hit U and then L to get a loop selection. Hold the shift key down, add this loop, and then add this loop. And if I wanna thicken everything up, I can right click and go to normal transform, normal move. And if I click and drag, you can see how this is moving everything out. And you can see what's going on there. Now at this point, I'm gonna go and select these four polygons and shrink these down. And you can see we have this nice, thick, stubby little leg. But what if I wanna sharpen up the top of the leg here? What I can do is I can first is match this edge flow here with the roundness of this edge flow here. So I'm gonna to go to point mode, select these points here, hit M and then O to get my slide tool. What the slide tool does is allow you to slide points or edges along a surface. So I'm just gonna move these edges out so it more conforms to this edge flow here and do a little something like this and this and zoom in here, get this point like so. And this is looking pretty good. So that's just gonna smooth everything out. And then to sharpen this, I'm gonna hit M and then L to get my loop or path cut. And you can see all these extra edges here. I'm gonna get rid of them by going to display and going to isoparms. And that will get rid of those extra edges that are getting generated by the subdivision surface and just show us the original edges we currently have. And so if I add a cut like right here, you can see that's gonna sharpen up that leg. And so if I go to my edge mode, and hit Q and double click this new edge that we just created and then hit M and then O and I'll hit Q to turn on the subdivision surface. You can see as I move this up or down, the closer this edge is to this edge, it's gonna be even sharper. So you can kind of determine how sharp you want that edge to be or how sharp you want the top of the leg to be. We have this nice stubby little 
leg here. I can go U and L to get this loop selection, maybe move this down just a little bit, and maybe go and double click this edge to get this loop selection, and right click and just iron this out a little bit. Maybe I don't want it that sharp. We'll iron it up. And so we got one leg. Let's go and create all the other legs. So what I'm gonna do is go to polygon mode and let's right click and I'm gonna go down to symmetrize. And I'm gonna go to the little gear icon here and click it. And this is where we can actually mirror and symmetrize geometry. So I'm gonna uncheck this link with hub, which is the hub up here, the symmetry hub. I'm not gonna use that yet. But at this point we can go and say, okay, we wanna symmetrize this geometry, but in which axes? So by default, it's set to mirror plus X to negative X, which is exactly what we want. I'm just gonna hit okay. And you can see that, boom, we just created another leg here. And so at this point, I'm gonna go and symmetrize the negative Z to the positive Z. So let's right click again, go to symmetrize, and we'll turn off X and we're gonna go to negative Z to positive Z, which is the backside of the piggy. And we'll hit okay. And you can see, boom, we have the back legs as well, which is looking really good. Now, there is the problem of, we have this nice little point going on here. So what we can actually do is hit M and then K and we can go and make some cuts here. So cut here and here and here and here and create this nice little box. And then I can go to my edge mode and just delete these edges here. But instead of deleting and hit delete key, we're gonna right click and go to dissolve and that will just remove those extra edges. So we have a nice quad here instead of like a point. And so the topology is gonna be much nicer. So nice little fix there. And so at this point, let's find the front of our piggy, which is right here. And we're gonna create a snout. So I'm gonna go to my polygon mode, select these four polygons here, and I'm gonna go in inner extrude. So just like we did with the legs, we're gonna inner extrude by M and then W, which inner extrude is now called inset. So I'm gonna hit W and we'll inset. And then to make this nice and round, we're gonna right click and go to fit circle like so, and then hit E for the move tool, command click and drag to extrude, and then command click and drag again to extrude to create a nice little snout. And I can shrink this down and then to sharpen this tip of the snout, I can go to my edge mode, double click this edge and then hit M and then O to slide this down the snout. And you can see as we get this edge closer to this edge, it's sharpening everything up there. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna go in with those polygons selected, hit T for scale and just shrink this down, holding the shift key to constrain to increments of 5% and just flatten out the snout there. Now, if I wanted to go in maybe make this less of a sharp curve. I can double click this edge, get the loop selection and right click and go to iron. And this will just kind of iron everything out and smooth everything out as well. And so that's looking a little bit better. I can also double click this edge and hit T for scale and just scale this down so this edge loop is nice and flat. And maybe I'll just bring the snout in just a little bit. So we've got a stubby little snout and hit Q. And again, we wanna have the edge flow out here, mirror the rounded edge flow there. So I can go and select these edges, holding shift to add to selection and right click and go to iron. And you can see now we're gonna round everything out really nicely, looking really good. Nice and round little snout. And then again, we can sharpen this up by double clicking this edge loop and hitting M and then S. And we can actually bevel this. And so we're converting one edge loop to two, and you can see how that's kind of sharpening everything up there. Cool. So we got our snout. Let's add our little nostril. So I'm gonna go and select these two polygons, hit M and then W for inset again. And if I hit Q, you can see what we got going on there. And I'm gonna go right click, go and fit circle again to make this a little more rounder. Hit T for scale, shrink this in the Y. And then again, we're gonna extrude, so Hit the E key, command click or drag to extrude in, extrude in again. And you can see we got a nice little snout going on there. If we wanna shrink this down, I can grow the selection by hitting U and then Y a couple times and then hit T to just shrink this down like so. And then at this point, what I can do is mirror this side. But the one thing we need to do is make sure that all of our 
edges right down the middle are nice and aligned. You can see that it's a little bit off there. And let me show you what happens if we don't align these edges perfectly down the X axis here. So if I right click and do the symmetrize and we're gonna go and turn off Z and we're gonna go and turn on X. So positive X to negative X. And if I hit okay, you're gonna see that things aren't really lined up too well. So I'm gonna undo that. And so let's go and just get our loop selection here. I'm gonna double click to get that edge loop, hold the shift key down, double click again to get this loop and then shift and double click again. And we'll go under and I'll just select these edges here. So we're basically just selecting all these edges that make up the middle edge of the pig. And then I'm gonna hit T for scale and shrink this down, holding the shift key down, just shrink that down all the way to 0%. And then go to my coordinates and you can see we're not perfectly aligned on the X. So I'm going to zero out that value. And so at this point, all of our edges that make up the cross section of the pig are right down the center. Okay. So at this point I can go and right click, go to symmetrize and hit okay. And you'll see that this is perfectly symmetrically set up here. So looking really nice. Let's go and turn on subdivision surface again. Nice little piggy snout. Hey, do you want to support me without breaking the bank? See what I did there? Be sure to drop me a like and subscribe. Doing so alerts you anytime I come out with new content and it helps me grow my channel. And the best part is liking and subscribing is free. There's something else that everyone says is free too. What is that? So let's create our ears. So I'm going to go in, go to polygon mode. I'm going to select these two polygons. Going to be doing a lot of the same kind of uh, workflows here. So M and then W for inset. And then we'll go and let's just extrude up. So command click and drag to go up. And we'll kind of shrink this down like so. And at this point, let's go and thicken the back of the ear. So I'm gonna go to point mode and hit M and then O to slide these edges. And I'm gonna hit Q so I can actually see these edges. And again, we're just gonna make these points back a little bit more like so again making it so these edges are conforming to the shape of the ear so you can see what that looks like so we got a stubby little ear let's go and extrude the top again so I'm going to extrude upwards by hitting command click and dragging scale this down and so you can see what we have going on here and so I can rotate this I can get this loop selection Actually, let's undo that. Let me just get the point mode and get this point. Just move it back and just try to adjust the shape here. Another thing we can do is instead of just manually selecting and you know getting the rectangular selection by hitting zero and trying to adjust these point by point, I can actually get some of the sculpting tools to help me better adjust some of this stuff. So to get the sculpting tools, I'm going to go to mesh brushes and then just detach this brush menu here the sculpting brush menu here I can right click over here and go and change the icon size to medium so we can see this a little bigger I can even dock this to the side of my viewport here too and at this point I can go and like grab some of these points I'm middle mouse clicking and adjusting the size here and so this is just an easier way to adjust things without having to you know actually select the points one by one. And so I'm just, you know, nice and rounding out the little piggy ear like so. And so that's looking fairly good at this point. I'm not going to tweak this uh, forever. But that's looking pretty good. One gotcha is if you actually have a point selected and you try to use the grab tool, it's not going to grab anything other than that selected point. So make sure you deselect all by hitting controller command shift in a to deselect all. And then you can go and uh, adjust uh, with the sculpting tools here. All right. So this ears looking pretty good if I do say so myself. So at this point we need to, again, go and mirror that ear to the other side. So right click and we'll go to symmetrize again. And again, we'll just need to go from positive X to negative 
and you can see that see all these extra points there we don't want that so let's go in again make sure that all these edges are nice and perfectly aligned down the center which they're just slightly off see that these two edges are just slightly off so I'm gonna go and let's go to point mode let's bring up our front view full screen here I'm gonna hit zero for my rectangular selection I'm just gonna select these edges right down the middle and make sure I just get the middle points here hit T for scale scale this down you can see everything's just slightly off in the X so I'll zero that out again and this should hopefully work much nicer now so I'll go right click symmetrize positive to negative X hit OK and now you can see those extra points don't show up so this is looking much uh, better here and so at this point you can see we actually have an extra point so let me go I'm gonna hit commander control a and right click and go to optimize and that will remove any floaty <laughs> points that were right there that are just like byproducts of doing that symmetry then go to point mode and just make sure that everything is nice and round so again hit M and then O to get the slide tool I can even slide the front of the snout up like so and this is looking pretty nice if I want to adjust both sides at the same time I can turn on the global symmetry by turning on this little butterfly icon here in this little gear icon there you can actually show which symmetry planes you have active so if I have X active and I slide this edge right here you can see how it's also mirroring that on the other side so you can see what this is looking like like so and so if I hit Q you got a nice little piggy ear I can of course go and maybe if I want to make this a little wider I can even with symmetry turned on use the sculpting tools and have sculpting with symmetry as well so you can see the dot on the right and the dot on the left so I can go and just really have a lot of fun with sculpting everything like so and getting the exact type of ear shape that I want so you can see how using symmetry and sculpting tools you can quickly and easily model stuff and if you hit the shift key that's a modifier to go to the smooth tool but it's very heavy-handed so if I go to the smooth tool and bring down the strength to maybe like 5% and then go back to my grab tool so I can grab and then hold the shift key down and just tap and this is gonna slightly smooth things out okay so this is looking pretty nice and if I want to sharpen the base of the ear here I can hit Q and then hit M and then L to get my loop cut and you can see if I cut right there it's gonna sharpen the base of the ear and since I have symmetry on it also did it to the other side there so if I hit M and then O you can see how actually the slide tool doesn't work so well with the symmetry for whatever reason you can see how that's kinda of going in different directions so at this point I'm just gonna go double click this edge turn off the symmetry hit M and then O bring this down double click to get this loop selection here and hit M and then O there as well and so this is matching pretty good I'll just bring these points in to flatten out the front of the ears again hit shift to just kind of smooth everything out and that's looking good by the way if you're new to Cinema 4D or you want to get a little bit more in depth into learning Cinema 4D check out my course is over at schoolofmotion.com. If you use promo code iDesign100, you can save $100 on either of my Cinema 4D courses. All right, let's get back into it. So I do see that I want to grow and make sure that the front of the pig is nice and round. So I'm just going to go and adjust the front bit here. And I can go zero to get my rectangular selection, move the piggy snout in, maybe scale it up a little bit. And... I keep adjusting here but I think this is looking nice what we can do at this point is let's add the final bit here which is adding a tail so I'm going to turn off symmetry and I'm going to select these four polygons M and then W for inset so same kind of workflow here right click fit circle and then what I'm going to do at this point is delete that selection of polygons to leave a nice to leave a little hole in the backside and so what I can do at this point and what's really cool is I can go and model the curly tail manually by getting an end side 
and hitting T for scale. And basically you want to have this end side match the same amount of edges here. So if I turn off the subdivision surface, you can see we have eight edges on that hole on the back side. And then for the inside, we just need to match that. So you can see those match perfectly. And then at this point, I can go and create a helix, bring this back like so, and use a sweep object to sweep the end side along the helix. And then we can adjust the helix here to shrink this down, just the end radius, just the height here. So you can see how we can basically model the curly tail like so. And then we can go to the sweep, twirl down the details and adjust the thickness of the tail along the sweep, which is really cool, along the spline of the sweep. So this is looking pretty nice. At this point, we just need to make this editable. And you can see all of those little extra edges that show up there. So I'm gonna go to the helix. I'm gonna bring the subdivisions down. And if I hit N then and B and go to wireframe, you can see all those extra edges. I'm gonna go and bring the intermediate point number down to zero. And you can see we're working with a lot less edges there and bring down the subdivisions even more. And so this is looking good. And so what we can do at this point is I'll make the sweep editable, but first I'm gonna create a backup just in case. So command click and drag, and we'll hide this, turn those off, hit C to make this editable. This will be the tail. And so at this point I can go and get this polygon and try to match this to like this edge right here. So if I just move the tail back a little bit and I'm gonna bridge this polygon to this polygon. So actually, I'm gonna delete that polygon there. So I'm left with a little hole there. I'm gonna double click this loop selection here of edges, hold the command or control key down, select the piggy mesh, hold the shift key down, double click this edge here. And then what I'm gonna do is hit M and then P to stitch and sew. And I'm gonna select this edge and match it with this edge over there. And you can see that we just stitched those two edges together. And so what I'm gonna do at this point is make sure that these two objects are combined. So I'm gonna right click and go to connect objects and delete. And so if I select this edge, you can see they're still not combined. So if I go in command and control A to select all the edges, right click and go to optimize, what that's gonna do is join everything together. So now I can select this edge and that's connected. So I'll hit M and then O to slide. And we'll slide this up the back side here and hit Q and you can see we've got this nice little tail. I'll select this edge, hit M and then O and we'll slide that up. And if I wanted to sharpen this even, I can go and hit M and then L, create one more cut here, select it, maybe shrink it down like so. And so you can see the cool part about this is you can create one piece of geometry and as long as the polygons kind of match up, you can then merge those objects together. So I can go and you can select these edges here. I can shrink everything down move that in, even right click and go to the iron tool or go and smooth the edges if I wanted to. But I'd say this is looking pretty nice. I'll just hit M and O to slide these points down. And cool, so there you go. We got a nice little piggy and let's add some eyes. So let's go and I'll create a sphere. Again, let's turn on our isoparms here, shrink down the eye and we'll create some symmetry here. We'll add in the symmetry object. Now you can see we got some eyes. Let's turn off our garage shading with lines. Let me just adjust this. You can even select the piggy, maybe shrink it down a little bit. And so let's go ahead and texture this. So I'm gonna go and let's go to Redshift, get our material manager, go to materials, standard, We'll apply this to the piggy. And we'll just make this nice and pink, something like that. And then what we can do, actually that's that's like really, really pink. Let's go and lighten that up. There we go. And then what we can do is we can make a loop selection to make the inside of the snout a little bit black. So I'll go to my loop selection, make sure I have, this is not the tail anymore, this is the piggy and hit U and then L, and then hit U and F to get the fill here. 
and shift to add to selection. And then at this point I can go and duplicate this material, turn this to a black material. And actually I need to mirror this selection. So I'll hit U and then shift and V to symmetrize selection. So shift and V and hit okay. And you can see that we'll add that. And then I'll drag and drop this directly onto the selected polygons. You can see that added that black material to the selected polygons. And then at this point I can hit U and then L and maybe duplicate this pink material, make it a little bit darker. Maybe add that to the snout, like so. And actually, I forgot to add this loop. So UL, UL, and there we go. Add to that selection. And so now we got the different colored snout there. And ideally, you would actually go in and you can see how this doesn't really line up too, too well. But ideally you would go in and UV unwrap this whole thing and then add textures. But this is just an easy way to be able to just add materials to polygon selections and get things looking pretty nice that way. So that requires no UV unwrapping at all. And let's apply the black material to the eyeballs. And so there you go. We got a nice little piggy. And if you wanted to make this into a piggy bank, well, we can easily do that. Let's go and we'll select these polygons here, M and then W, and then we'll just shrink this down to create a little slot right there. And then I'll hit Command or Control, click and drag downwards and down again and down again. And I'll just delete those selected polygons. And if I hit the Q key, you can see that we got a nice little piggy bank hole. Now at this point we can go and get the grab tool, turn on mirror, and we can adjust the slot here if we want. And so there you go. Turned a piggy into a piggy bank. So yeah, modeling can be a pain, but you can see that just by using a few modeling tools and methods, you can model some pretty basic stuff pretty easily. Now, what do you want to see in my next tutorial? Be sure to leave a comment and tell me what you want to see next. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, go out and make something.